Miss Erica will be our first speaker tonight. Great. And she has been very prepared for this speech. She has talked to me numerous times, and she's gotten together with a lot of the people in our group. And everyone has volunteered to help her out tonight. I think you're in for a treat. As a dyed-in-wool introvert, Erica has always struggled with making small talk with strangers. And she should never talk to strangers. <laughs> in her speech tonight, she shares her introvert's perspective on small talk and gives pointers to aid in easy conversations for introverts and extroverts alike, like Frank. This speech is Project One from the Interpersonal Communication Manual. The Right Way to Be Selfish, An Introvert's Guide to Conversing with Strangers. Please welcome Erica Schwann. My settings. I know I'm really going to Toastmaster tool, but bear with me here. You're at a bus stop. A stranger sits down next to you and wants to engage you in conversation. What do you do? Do you... A, pretend to be very busy, immediately grab your phone and pretend to be doing work. Do you B, politely respond to them, but in a way that doesn't engage further conversation? Or do you C, open your hearts and your mind and listen to what your fellow interlocutor has to say? Now, if you're anything like me, your instinct would be one of the first two. Shut it down. <laughs> I'm here to talk to the introverts in the audience. Those of us who the choice of whether to engage in conversation or to back quietly away isn't easy. It isn't obvious. Now I know some of my fellow <coughs> Toastmasters here are on the other side of the spectrum. For them, the choice is obvious. I've got the time. I've got the energy. Why not? Let's see where life will take me. For those of you go-getters out there, you garrulous sorts that want to just <laughs> get out there and talk to everybody and meet and see where life takes you, I applaud you. But I want to talk to you about what it's like on the other side of the psychological spectrum as an introvert. Now, introverts, extroverts, I want to share with you some simple ways to communicate easily with strangers. It's a bit of a surprise. The biggest key for communicating with strangers is very simple. Be more selfish. How many of you actively practice being more selfish? Anyone think about how you can incorporate selfishness into your day? <laughs> Why not? It's tremendous fun. Hear me out. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> To give you an example of the right way to be spent selfish, I first want to share with you the counterexample, the wrong way to be giving. You're at a meeting, every department is represented, but there's one person there. Oh, they have all the answers. They want to give you their ideas, their opinions. They want to share with you their expertise. I want you to learn from my experience, I'm going to give of my time and energy so your life can be better. Oh, but yours too. I know what you should do. And you over there, don't think I, I can give. I can give. This right here is the wrong way to be giving. Counter this with the right way to be selfish. A selfish person sits down and listens to the first people around them they extract little nuggets of information from all of them. They have no intention on sharing. They pocket a little bit from you. They're going to snag a little bit from you. They're going to put it in their pocket silently, compressing all the information that's given to them. They're going to get to know people. They're going to rattle everybody's brain and say, what's it that makes this one tick? What's this person got to say that can aid me in my quest. The selfish person, they can be very sly. They can be very, very sneaky. They want to get to know everything that you know. They don't exactly, as of yet, have any interest in 
sharing. It can be very fun to be selfish. You can imagine yourself like a chili pepper, taking the flavors of the ground and the earth, developing their own terroir, their own spiciness, their own boldness from the people and the life that surrounds them. Now you may think, maybe I'm a bit of a nut, but I'm not the first one to say it's a good thing to be selfish. Dale Carnegie, in his seminal classic, How to Win Friends and Influence People, he talked a lot about the same kind of things. He wasn't brash enough to call it what I called it, being selfish, but it stands true. Get to know people, use their name, make them feel important. Turn the conversation towards what other people are interested in. Don't interrupt, listen politely. Well before him, Cicero wrote in 446 BC on the importance of everyday conversation. And he said much of the same things. Speak clearly, speak easily, not too much, and never interrupt. I want to show you how this is done. Today, I'm going to welcome aboard a few of my compatriots here, Frank, Claudia, and Maria. Come up and join me, please. Help me get that sleeve on. choice of kept Rebecca Black up at night, which seat do I take? <laughs> now over here, there's an option over here. We've got a gentleman to the right there. He's taking up some good spread there. There's this phrase coming about, you might have heard it, called man spreading. They're taking up a lot of space. They're kind of giving the vibe. This is my chance. Leave me alone. <laughs> so I'm going to leave this gentleman alone. It's unfortunate. It's a, it's a delicate irony. Usually the people that are more off-putting, a lot of times they're the ones you really want to talk to. That would be an advanced class in communication. I'm not ready for that just yet. And this lady here, doing the same thing. She's got some closed off body posture. She looks to be very active. What does she have in her ears? Everyone can see? Her earbuds? The international symbol of I wish to be left alone. <laughs> this person may be a gem worth discovering, an introvert just to shield it off. She's saying, not at this moment, not me, not today. And yet over here, what do we have? We have a lady sitting silently with a book, but she's smiling friendly, and I think, I think she and I might have something to, to chat about. Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi, how are you? Very well. Good. Good book? Yeah, actually it is. Really yeah. good. Very informative. Excellent. Are you studying right now? Uh, I am studying, but I'm actually reading this book, How to Get Into Medical School, or Getting Into Medical School. Oh, goodness. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Learning the processes of what's needed. Boy, yeah, that sounds like a daunting task. Are you, yeah? <laughs> are you far on that journey? Are you, are you currently I'm trying to get fly? I'm in the beginning of the process. Fantastic, fantastic. What are you currently studying in school right now? 
cell biology. Oh yes, cell biology. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it must be work that you really enjoy for the the dedication that you need to take to. to put yes, that in. Mm -hmm. yes. Being a nurse for umpteen years, oh, I yeah. have a lot of passion, mm -hmm. and I enjoy it very much. Mm -hmm. I bet as a nurse, you've seen a lot of things in life, huh? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Kind of gives you a appreciation for life and all the walks that we have to take. Yep, that's right. <laughs> Very good. Mm -hmm. How are you doing? Oh, yeah, doing well. Doing well. On your way to work. Not going to not going to med school though. <laughs> that sounds like well, <laughs> you have to have the heart for it. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, yeah. No, I did psychology. I, it's something I really, really loved, and it's more you know on the other side of, of the spectrum. There, you know, behaviors. So oh, okay. When, okay. When biology sometimes uh, rewires our brains, and where behavior can be a largely biological, I bet you've seen a good bit of that. I have. Yeah. I have. I've run into quite a few uh, psychologists and some scenarios at my work setting, and it's it's interesting how you're you have to put your mind in their shoes or know how to separate each case. Yeah. You, uh, tell me more about that. Would you um, put yourself in their shoes and understanding where they're coming from? Right, right. I have patients come in. I used to work in an OBGYN setting. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of losses. And there's nothing I can do but just be there and be empathetic for them and show them, hey, you know, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. That's a powerful message to see even the darkest aspects of life and still have the message of, you know, you're going to get through this, and there's somebody there, compassionate, to be there with you. That's very impressive. That's, that's yeah. really good work. Thank you. So, yeah, that's congratulations, and uh, I guess I will not disturb you anymore, so you can continue with your study. Thank you. It was very nice meeting you. Very nice meeting you as well. <laughs> 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 All right, so as I wanted to point out, having somebody uh, with a book, if I may, yeah, and having somebody with a book, the absolute best thing an introvert would ever want to see is a book sitting closed on someone's lap because this means that there's a you've got a key into who they are it's an easy door this is the best thing an introvert will ever see for opening a conversation and somebody like maria here who was making eye contact and smiling with me was was engaging in conversation i was a little I'm glad I got this project over with. <laughs> Maria, thank you so very much. And I want to thank Claudia and Frank for, for demonstrating other body postures. <laughs> thank you guys so much. I instructed Frank to look as much like the Unabomber as possible. You're trying to Now, it is just a very brief discussion about, well, I guess I'll let people sit back down. <laughs> the final aspect of my speech tonight is a brief conversation about how the audience, you, thought our conversation went, and I'll also ask Maria what she thought. So Maria, how did it go? Did you mind being pestered by someone on the bus? I did not. You were very pleasant. You had a nice smile. Okay, great. I really enjoyed the conversation. Excellent. Any uh, feedback? Anything you thought worked particularly well? I'm sure we all noticed those little moments of introvert talking here. <laughs> uh, any, any feedback for me from, in, from the audience? Same. One question I have found fairly effective is how did you get into that? Oh, I like that. Yeah. Because Very open ended. Very open ended, ended and you can mm -hmm. deep, you know, my uncle, my aunt, exactly. you know, I had experience. I mean, it really opens up to you know, a deeper conversation. Excellent. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Erica, I have a hard time with this introvert mm -hmm. looking for someone that they can sit down and talk <laughs> with. I am an introvert. Everyone here knows that I'm an introvert. Mm -hmm. I will go out of my way to find a corner of the bus <laughs> where there is either no one or they're, they're, they are all like Frank <laughs> and Claudia, minding their own business and leaving me alone. <laughs> I, as an introvert, I would yeah. never feel comfortable opening a conversation with Maria. Mm -hmm. It won't happen. 
maybe I need that psychologist. So you're, you're that tough nut to crack, though, right? You're the person that's very well worth getting to know, and yet you put off that exterior of not just now. That's the expert class. But for, for those of us that are introverts, and I am absolutely the, the same, when you do take that leap, there, there was a wonderful TED Talk that I watched a while back. It's called the, Your Life is Clickbait Waiting to be Clicked. And it said stuff like, you know, go out, talk politics with strangers, order your coffee, collect dough, and walk out there and tell the world who you are and see what happens. And that's a really exciting thing. But the point I want to leave you with today, being selfish in the right way can be a wonderful tool. Because if you can imagine yourself like the Ebenezer Scrooge of conversation, <laughs> your life will get better. Ebenezer Scrooge, as we know from Charles Dickinson's novel, A Christmas Tale, he was a Christmas Carol. He was extru extraordinarily selfish. He was uh, penny pinching and he manipulated and he tweaked until he got this ama ama amazing mass of wealth. At the end, when he was confronted with his life choices and where it was leading him, ultimately he decided to start to be giving. So here's the point where all of us, selfish, unselfish alike, at some point you're going to be asked to give. If you're like Ebenezer Scrooge and for years and years you were picking and pinching and thinking and twisting everything that you got from the people that are around you, you find that you all of a sudden have so much more to offer from your years of compressing and stealing ideas from everybody else. Your brain's been pollinated by so many. When you do, when it is your turn to give, you have so much more to offer. And I think that's the point of Ebenezer Scrooge's life. He wouldn't have had so much to offer if he hadn't for years been a penny. Thank you.